Hey guys, it's Jordan from Two Guys in Traffic, and I'm sitting here in traffic. But a couple weeks ago, I was in Jackson Hole, Wyoming with Tim Herrick, who's the executive chief engineer of Chevy and GMC full-size pickup trucks. And we took him for a drive and found some traffic and uh, had a pretty good interview. So here it is. I'm Tim Herrick. I'm the executive chief engineer for the next generation full-size trucks. And uh, we're riding a three liter diesel here right now. I have some some love of that truck as well as some heavy duties that you've been driving this year. This yeah. Week, so. yeah, we've had the, had the heavy duties and I shot a, a, a video of that earlier today with a different Tim. Okay. So you're you're the better new and improved Tim. Okay, well, I well, hope that. Or a different Tim. Or disappoint Tim. you. It's just a different Tim. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so you uh, are basically responsible for everything. The whole thing. Everything but the sales price. Okay, so material I Material cost, validation, yeah, it's like, hey, what does it cost? Don't ask me any questions about what they cost. Okay. Well, I can we'll tell t- you, well, I won't tell you how much the material cost is for one of them. No? No. Okay. Probably won't go with that. I mean, you can if you want. Yeah, we're not going to probably like, let that out. No, that's all right. We have to stop by the bar to do that. <laughs> all right. Then turn off the cameras, too, I Yeah, bet. probably. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is the uh, 2020... Yeah. This is what happens. There's traffic and yeah. there's tourists. We're here in Jackson, Wyoming, and there's tourists everywhere. And I just think I cut some people off and everything. So okay, fine. You did great. Yeah, it's fine. <clears throat> um, so uh, so this is the 2020 yes. uh, GMC Sierra 1500, which yes. is the half ton, yep. as they call it. Um, and so this truck was new last year. Yep. Right. And as then a 2019 but, as a 2019, but this engine is new for 2020. That's correct. And so that's uh, that's pretty interesting. And so uh, uh, GMC and the sister brand Chevy, this engine's going to be available in both yes. vehicles. Yep. Um, and it's the same engine. Yes. Okay. And uh, you guys are, uh, I think, the last to the half ton diesel party. But I think you think yeah. you are the best to the diesel oh, no, party. No, we actually know that. You know you're the because you know verified the best. it. We verified you it. You did yeah. testing. Yes. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, it's. It, Know, people always look at those sort of things. Oh, geez, you're last. But I, you know, to me, it's kind of okay. You're last, but it doesn't matter now because they're available for all of them. So how do they, how does it compete? Yeah, just uh, you know, architecturally, at the beginning, we knew that we were going to have this engine in the architecture. And when you were building the, the when, truck, when we were building the whole truck, you know, from the from the ground up, clean sheet of paper, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, we were able to, you know, know that we were going to put this engine in. It's a line six. So, you know, it can be difficult to package. So we kind of packaged the architecture around that, and we knew that we, we always wanted it. You know, whether we were going to be <clears throat> first, last, you know, we, we knew we weren't going to be first because the Ram was already out there. Yep. Uh, but then, you know, the Ford came along. But we knew architecturally when we were rolling out, we just wanted to put and it yeah, in the Yeah, you had a timeline. Yeah. And you were going to stick to that. And yeah, it's, you know. yeah. Um, and I think a lot yeah. of that, because this, uh, you know, these trucks, uh, people don't, if you're not in the industry, I think people don't realize how long they take. Oh, they take a while. To make. Yeah. Um, and then what I've always heard is seven years is sort of the rough number, and then that's sort of accelerating a little bit. Sure. Um, I mean, but it's, so it's we been, really don't talk about how long it takes. But, but it's been around for a while. It's been around that, for a while. It's been working on for yep. a bit, right? And uh, the engineer's been working on You know, it's there's a lot of that goes into it. You know, we make it look easy, but it's actually <laughs> pretty complicated. Yeah. You know, at any one time, we've got 10,000 engineers working on the architecture and, you know, from powertrain engineers to... Across uh, the right across now, the like, company across, or on this? <clears throat> across the whole company. Well, no. This architecture, 10,000 people working on it at wow. any one time. So if you so if you go into a uh, Chevy or, or GMC dealer for this truck, you buy it. 10,000 people. 10,000 engineers have had their, of their great fingers work. in the pie. Yeah. Yep. Which, that's impressive. Whether it's the planning, whether it's the engineering of it, you know, everything is, is in math, everything is thought out. You know, there's nothing on this truck that we just did haphazardly. And, you know, and that's sort of everything. And I, I've talked about this on the on the show before, talking about how every bit that you touch is very intentional. Nothing yes. is sort of left to chance and things, which sort of makes me tilt my head sometimes and think, why did that decision get made? And I sure. know there's decision, you know, good reasons behind it. Yeah. And and, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Sometimes you guys enjoy them and write about them, and sometimes you, uh, you know, 
tell us what you think. Yeah. Well, I think you always want us to tell us what you think. Sure. But the the interesting thing is sort of what, you know, we were talking about last night, how the focus on the customer yeah. is not necessarily the focus on, on the journalist. Right. Because what we complain about is stuff that sometimes a customer might not ever think about. Right. Just because we're in a new car every week, and so if something's at all different, yeah, then we're going to complain about it. Right, and you're Whereas taking the best of the best of the best across all kinds of different architectures and different things like, well, why couldn't this be like that? And why couldn't it, you know, because you, know, you can cherry pick a number of different things. I mean, like my wife, she, you know, there's five different guys in the neighborhood. They all do something different. She, she's like, wait, why don't you do the dishes? And why don't you do the laundry? <laughs> Combine them into the one it? perfect guy? Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, if I had the X just, from the <laughs> Ford and the Y from yeah, the Ram and this from the Chevy. Right, it's, well, right. you can't quite do that. Yeah, exactly. So... That part of it, plus, from a customer standpoint, we had over 7,000 respondents that we went to clinic in, in three different states okay. uh, that we went to clinic with to go over, you know, the architecture, all the different pieces, asked them a lot of questions, a lot of focus groups. It's really fun for me because I get a chance to sit in some of the focus groups. They don't know I'm from uh, GMC. Oh. And I'll sit there and, and ask them. So You're just a guy. Just a, Yeah, just another one of them. And it's amazing what they know about their trucks. It's amazing what they know about the competitors' trucks. And it's just fun to sit back and smile and watch them, you know, tell us why, you know, they bought this over that. Or, say, a diesel engine. How much more is it? Well, it's this. And then they'll take out their pencil. And what say, truck is it going to be available in? Right. And they'll take out their pencil and fuel economy. They'll look at the whole thing. And they'll they'll do farmer's math very quick and say, okay, that, that's, that's a good Works out to X dollars for me yeah. or whatever. And they yeah. get some paid off. Yeah. So for something like, like the diesel... Um, were people asking for a diesel specifically, or did they just uh, did they want better fuel economy? Well, what, the, what sort of drives this ending up in this truck? You know, in better fuel economy, uh, they are, you know they other than people costs. If you're making a living with this with this truck, other than your people costs, your fuel costs are your, probably your second largest thing that you'll that you'll pay, and the people costs are just out, you know very uh, very high. Yep. And, and the the fuel costs are very high, so. You know, they're looking for that value, and they'll they'll make that calculation right for you. Uh, look at that over there. You see the Tetons over there? That man, is oh man. unreal. This is this is a paradise. I, I mean, you come out here and this. Yeah. But, and, so, you know, it's beautiful, but this is truck country. Truck, yeah. Truck. 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 Yeah. yeah. There's, they're, there's behind us. They're everywhere. Yes. And, you know, I live in uh, outside of Boston, and there's a good number of trucks. Right. But it's not like this. Yeah. You get to Texas, you get out to Wyoming, Montana, uh, you know, it, it is truck country. Yep. They, and they do it because they need them. They, you know, I was talking to they actually some use of the, them, yeah. Yeah, some of the guys around here, you know, four-wheel drive is king. They're saying, you know, the, the snow loads that they get here over four feet, you know, out in the valley here. And, yeah, I mean, we're, the we're at the end of, uh, almost the end of August here, <laughs> and there's still, still snow. snow. Yeah. So you imagine how much snow did they get? Yeah, you know how they, much was here in March? They said uh, they said this was a this was a bad winter for them. So or is a good winter? Well, because yeah, they get it water. On, it de- well, that's true. It depends and on your skiers perspective. And yeah, yep. yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I've been through some. Uh, well, there was a, a GMC Yukon that had a taxi thing sitting on top. Yeah. So there's a taxi. It's not a. Yeah. It's not a Crown Vic. Well, I, it's I not took a, I took a lift from the airport the other day, and uh, the lady that showed up was was in a I don't know a 2005. Uh, Suburban. There you go. Yeah. Plenty of room. Yeah. Gets you around. It was kind of funny because I was telling her that I was the design engineer. I did the front and rear bumpers. And oh, okay. Stuff like that. So then she was very interested. Did the bumpers so. still look good? <clears throat> they look great. 15 years later? That's just I the way I designed guess you did a good job. Um, okay. So so uh, so fuel economy is yeah. driving that. Um, and with the diesel engine, you get a whole lot of low-end torque. Oh, yeah. Which for a truck, you're going to be towing something. You're going to load a bunch of payload in. Yeah. Fill it full of your kids. Um, I really try and focus on not so much the numbers, but like what you can do with it. Yeah. So you know, if you if you were buying this truck, you get number one, really good fuel economy. Awesome. Fuel that's going to be your your over the long term. That's going to pay for yep. the the cost of the engine. Yeah. Which adds something. Do we still have a window sticker somewhere? Yeah, I can look it up. Yeah, it's yeah. uh yeah somewhere in here. I know on the big truck it's like ten grand. Yeah, on this, this one. one's not. Well, let's see it's how much quite, it filled not quite out. That yeah, yeah, you got it. So this is the, one of the things that my co-host does. Is he goes? Oh through yeah, the, it's. Uh, oh, that's helpful. In, intentionally left blank. Oh okay. But I, I, you can get the. Yeah, and now we can put it on the screen. It's uh, the the diesel option costs boom, this much money. Um, 
and uh, and so then you can figure out how much over time. Yeah. And eventually it'll pay for itself. But you also yeah. get uh, the diesel, which gives you that super low end torque, yeah. um, which I think comes in at some very low RPM. Yeah, the the torque curve is just outstanding with this, and the responsiveness of the turbo, how how the guys designed that turbo around the responsiveness, sized it right, no lag in it, uh, spools up extremely quick. Uh, the responsiveness of it is just outstanding. I I drove one for twelve to fifteen thousand miles, you know, probably about a year, year and a half ago, and uh, they had to take it back for me. They Aww. pried it out of my hands. I mean, I I loved it. It, it makes you you know enjoy driving because that's the other parts that we do because you love the automotive industry. Yep. I love the automotive industry, but driving and having fun and and you know really experiencing the vehicle made me kind of feel 28 again (laughs) there you go yeah um and so if you were going to buy it as someone if you weren't i mean you have those those truck guys who know every in and out they know exactly what it means um for someone who's just going in to buy a truck to maybe throw their skis in the back and take it out what's in the day-to-day is different with the diesel from the the unleaded aside from needing to go to a different (laughs) fuel pump Right, uh, you know, you can feel, you feel it at a different fuel pump, and sometimes they're a little bit more difficult to find, but they're there. Uh, you also have to put uh, diesel uh, emission fluid, exhaust yep. fluid in there. Yep, the def uh, fluid. Def fluid, yep. Yeah, you have to put that in. Um, about how often? About uh, about an oil change. Okay. Interval is what we yeah because it, we shoot it for. depends on mileage, right? It gets yeah. burned off as you drive. Uh, it depends on your mileage. It depends on the way you drive it. So it, it can vary. You know per the driver and we have certain schedules uh, that we've taken data with customers and say hey we want it to be about a um, a oil change interval so yeah. that, that's really the only difference and then you know the, the low and torque to responsiveness uh, and the fuel economy piece of it so got it so uh, having the the turbo and things do you have to sort of let it sit for a while or worry about plugging it in for the engine heater and things or is yeah. not too much on the small yeah. that's more on the bigger yeah engines right yep. that doesn't um, so yeah, the six six that you drove. Today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So basically, on this you have the big, uh, uh, big low end torque, yep. which is great, and you use a different fuel pump. But other than that, yeah, pretty much just drive it yeah. like a normal truck. Yeah, and you get a little bit of the rumble, which is yeah. nice. People like the diesel rumble. Yeah, there's guys. You know, you you get into the clinic and they'll talk about they can hear it, they, they like, like it, right? So you let a little bit of that in, but not where it's a intrusive you know and I think that the diesel with uh, all that all the OEMs putting them in the light duties now I think there's going to be a, more of a take to it it's, it will never be a little our more highest bo- yeah a little yeah. more acceptance it, it won't be our highest volume engine yep um, but you know it's great for fuel economy you know it's a great greenhouse gas uh, you know enabler yep so. And and you can see, uh, uh, I, I, I won't ask you any questions about future products because I know you have yeah, that we line got, well yeah, rehearsed. We, yes. But uh, uh, as a journalist, I could see uh, other products in the portfolio where this engine could potentially That'd be really smart, fit in. Yeah, someone should do that. Someone should. You'd get a lot of money back up from your uh, yeah. your investment. Uh, yeah, there. return on investment. Yeah. Very high Some, you should think of that. You know what? I think I will. All right. I'll, I'll make there a mental go. note. And Perfect. Um and, uh, and yeah, so uh, I've been driving this around for a little bit, and then I drove, you had one out at the demo uh, that had the fully loaded uh, trailer, which yeah. I think was eight or 9,000 pounds. Yeah, um, 9,600? Yeah, it was, it was yeah. a lot. Yeah, um, that's about 90% of what people tow in the half-ton arena. Yeah, and that, and that did great. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's got the inline six, three liter, which is small, right? The, the truck guys are going to be like, oh, geez, what a little engine. But it's the little engine that could. It works yeah. great. Yeah, it work, does work great. Yeah, and there's, you know, that towing number is a, a, a great number. Some of the other guys are talking about their towing number, but from what I understand, when they when they did the when they did their ride, they only let you tow half the. Half yeah. The, yeah, yeah, they didn't didn't go for the full size. I wonder but, why that was. Well, you know, I, I yeah. couldn't. I'd have to ask them. We would never do that. I'll take them out. Yeah. Well, you guys went to the max. I mean, we had the max on the on the uh, heavy duty yeah. here to try, um, and then we were hauling around uh, uh, trailers that had uh, a surprise in the back. Yeah, Fort- did you like that? Yeah, I like the surprise. Uh, yeah. So by the time this goes up, well, no, there's no embargo on that. So yeah. we stopped and we took it out and took it out for a drive. You did not. Yeah, because there was no embargo on it. You didn't have it in the... <laughs> I thought about it. I'm like, I wonder if that's a working model, the keys in it. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, we drove a trailer, and, and they have the... Uh, 
uh, and this actually has it too, yep. is the camera, and you can get a camera that goes inside your rear trailer. So whether yeah. it's your RV yep. or a horse trailer or whatever, you can actually see what's inside yep. uh, here on the screen, which is pretty cool. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Um, but there was a surprise GMC Canyon, yes. which is the... Um, uh, the mid-size, mid-size truck, truck. Yeah, yeah, like the um, Chevrolet Colorado, yeah. Tacoma, Ford Ranger, uh, Jeep Gladiator. I guess those are sort of the big, uh, the big few. Sort of that that size truck, um, and the AT4, which yeah. is your uh, off-road trim, yeah, is coming in that next year. Yep. So that was the surprise. Yeah. Big building. There. Pretty cool. Um, this one is this the AT4? Mm, I don't no. know if it is or not. I don't it's not Denali. So. No. There's the diesel. I don't know. We don't have a we don't have a window sticker. Yeah. So we don't know. We don't know what kind of truck this we'll is. We'll figure that out. We'll find out. Um, <clears throat> and, Whatever trim uh, level it is, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's it's well pretty appointed. well it's well equipped. So it's got the safety suite. Um, yep. You got the the lane departure, yep. parking, uh, auto start stop, which is whatever you have to have that. Um, yep. So does does this? If I turn this off, yep. Will it stay off between cycles? No. Okay. So that turns on, and that's for. Uh, EPA emissions, yes. whatever requirements. Yep. When you turn the car on, it has to hit some sort of uh, yep. has to be be in the same way that you tested it. Yep, it's basically how that works. Yep. So and if you if it latched by the key cycle, then you don't get any credit for the start stop piece of it. Right, which some car makers do. I know yeah. Volvo has that on a couple because they didn't need that uh, yeah. extra little help. Yep. Um, so if you have that auto start stop, it's from the man here. It's uh, the government's fault. No, it's just the way it is. <laughs> it is the way it is. That's right. Um, yes. And then we got some other buttons here. We yeah. got. Uh, well, you can drop the tailgate. Yep, got a tailgate inside. button from in here. So if you're going to unload something, you can hit that as you get out. Yeah. And or, do it. Yeah. Or as you get or, in. Or, or as you pull up to a, a business and you want them to throw it in the, the back. You just, yep. yep. Um, and then we got uh, hazard lights, yep. traction control, yeah. uh, the power plug, yeah. which I think yeah. is the one in the. Is this switch for the one in the back? Or um, is it for this? Or it's is for it this, this? And, and I believe the one in the back. Uh, hill descent. Hill descent. Control yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, trailer. Yeah, integrated brake trailer brake Built controller. in, uh, yeah. which I think is an option. Yeah. So you can get that if you want it. Yeah. Um, and then you get USB C, regular USB, which yeah. I think are higher power. Yes. You're doing full power yeah. charging there. Yeah. And then a 12, 12 volt. volt. Yeah. And then you got more of those in here. Yes. Uh, in the in the box. Yep. And um, lit. And I gotta, I gotta ask, what's that? Huh? There's a blank. Yeah, there's. Uh, no, it's it's a detail that it's a it feels like there should a be a button detail. There. Really? Is it? Yeah. You sure? I don't think that's true. I, well, you never Looks know. Looks like a button. If, well, because I was stay tuned. You never know what's gonna go. Oh, on. geez. Well, I was thinking it would be cool to have. Um, so one of the the trailer. This one doesn't have the trailer on it. Um, so we don't have yep. the, the trailer features. Yep. But there's something called uh, the transparent trailer. Yeah. Which allows you, it gives you a screen, and I'll, sh- I'll here's some B-roll of it. Um, but it allows you to look through the rear trailer yeah, and really see cool. what's behind it um, by putting a camera on the back of it, which is great. Um, but you have to, uh, it makes, it hides CarPlay or it hides the nav or whatever. And so I said, oh, this should be the button. Got a button for it. The intelligent trailer button. Yeah. And so you hit that and it gives you... Yeah, the view, and then you could toggle it. Whatever in view and out. you want. And yeah, you, could, you just yeah. have a favorite button huh. there. So will. if we can find the guy who's responsible for that, yes, I'll, I'll tell him. Track him or her down. Perfect. Yeah, um, so we got that. So that's the uh, the sort of center stack, um, and this is the new GM. I can't remember what it's called. Something version three or something. I don't 3. know. Point, yeah, something. Three point four. Um, yeah. And so you got uh, you know you got. Audio phone, nav, which are great. The Wi-Fi hotspot from AT&T, which I think is fantastic. Yes. Um, CarPlay and Android Auto, and this is pretty responsive. Uh, the trailering yeah. uh, things, which are pretty cool. OnStar, all that stuff. I like that a lot. This is all responsive. Um, so this is all very good. Yes. Um, you should do a lot on the trailering stuff and the cameras. Yeah. That, that, that technology is really cool. Just the safety part of it. And yeah, and really, uh, you know, I think you guys talked about that earlier with yeah. um, talking about the market research. Yeah. And uh, was it was it your joke that said 57% of people say that yeah. towing totally yeah. makes them nervous? It's stressful, yeah. yeah. The other 43% lied. Yeah. yeah. So which I think that well, sounds about right. We're also, you know, in the business of saving marriages because also a high percentage of said that as they hook up to a trailer, it's stressful. Someone's and, driving, and the other person's in, back there, and they're yelling at each other. has gotten in an argument with a loved one. And so we at GMC are in the business of saving marriages. 
that that's exactly is very what good. we're gonna do. Uh, can we go in there? I, I, I don't, don't know. I don't really know. No. Other people went in there. Well, here, oh, here we can go up here. Yes. So we're gonna turn around because we're running out of traffic because we're yes up here. Then it wouldn't be. Um, the so name let's of turn the around show. and we will look at the Grand oh, Tetons oh here and goodness. be like, my goodness, I may even take a picture. You should. Because that is outstanding. Yeah, I mean, you were kind enough to bring us out here. Yeah. You want to? Yeah, I'll just. I'm going to turn around and get one out of the window. Okay, that'd be great. No camping. Okay. Oh, look at that turn radius. You got that's pretty good. good. Yeah. yeah. Well, and we have the. Yeah. The camera can tell us. Yeah, exactly where you are. You got the front camera. Yeah. So we got okay. So we got front camera, rear camera. Yep. Wide angle, front yep. and rear. Yep. We got the top. Down hitch. Uh, this is like voodoo magic. Yeah. I don't know how that works. Yeah, it's really cool. The you got front. the front. Piece so if you're it. coming up on a, yeah, you know, parking spot or whatever, yep, you can see that. This one is crazy. Yeah. Or you got the the fake truck, and then it combines all the. This is like voodoo stuff. This yes. Is nuts. So you got yep. the front and back. Yep. Uh, I will say, that's not color matched. No. This is a blue truck. Yes. That's silver. That's blue. <laughs> Are you colorblind? Maybe. <laughs> no. Um, and so this, then you get the, the side camera view for parking, yeah, like this, against a curb. Yep. And with the trailer on, when you put the blinker on, that that view will come. You oh, don't no, have a trailer. trailer. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. What, we, what we do is, and you might want to think about buying one of these or we'll get you one. It's a trailering dongle that you can go back there, plug it in. It thinks it's got a trailer oh, every so it time. Can put it in. Yeah, so that we can test without pulling stuff around. Oh, very good. Yeah. And then also for, for hooking up to the trailer, so yep. you get well, tire turn view. The, turn the wheels. Oh, that's the front. Yeah. Th- ah, so yeah. if you're uh, useful for off-roading, yeah. useful for if you're trying not to curb your wheel in a city, yep. things like that. Yep. Um, you got the rear one, so it looks straight down on the hitch. Yep, and this is, great. is trailer so view, and to... we talked about that this morning, where you back that up, and when you get it right where you want it, and then you put it in park, that's where the motor on caliper in the back energizes and yep. holds it right where you left it. So, yeah, because when you, if you don't tow... So you've got this ball, yeah. and and the, uh, the receiver the receiver has to go over it and basically sit on top of it. Yep. And it's got to be within an inch or two. Yeah. To to sort of make it fall. Yep. And the problem is when you put a vehicle in park on a grade, yep. it might roll just yep. a little bit. And the park ball will move. Yep. yep. And so that could be that uh, that fight with the marriage. Have I told be, you to stop? I, yeah. And then you rolled oh, back. You don't even need it. This will keep. Well, you f- and the other part of it is you can take. A, I gotta get it, this ridiculous. All right. Ridiculous image. You can keep okay. talking to the people. I'm gonna. I'm right. gonna take pictures of, of ridiculously gorgeous mountains here. So you got all of that, and then within the, within that, the with the trailering, mm-hmm. you can get started. You can get welcome to, to the trailering. You can get a, a checklist. Yep. Um, we found this which is, is right especially off the... on on the light duty one because the heavy yeah. duties we we talked about um, at the thing, uh, very common for for towing. Yes. People tow a lot. Yeah. Um, and uh, for. Uh, a lighter duty, you might not do it as often. Right. And so, you know, if you tow, if you're loading a trailer every day, yeah, you might know all this by heart. Yep. But if you don't, you've got this whole nice, hey, you know, okay, do this, pilot, and then you can check it off. A, even a pilot, and I've got my pilot's license, I don't fly anymore, but uh, I, every time I would go out and fly, and I would, would fly every week. You got a checklist. Week, you got a checklist, right? Yeah. It's just always good to be up on that. And you can mon- you can uh, modify the the checklist, you can have up to five trailer profiles. You can have maintenance alerts on it, security alerts. You can also then go through a, a routine that will um, that will turn on all the lights for a two-minute yep. routine. So a single person yes. can do all yep. the light checks. Yep. 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 And then the security alert thing I think is pretty cool. Yes. Where that's if you park it and you lock it. Yep. If someone tries to steal your trailer, yep. on, it'll it, set off the alarm. And I think that, sends a note to it, your phone, yeah, it'll too? Text, yeah, through OnStar, it'll text your, your phone. Yeah, and so uh, that's you know that's pretty cool, and that's the sort of thing um, that I really like, which is you're reusing. Oh, you talk about that? No, oh, it's all right. Eighties on eight. Eighties on eight. There you yeah. go. Hello, yeah. Cool J. I know that's your uh, that's your favorite. Um, um, I was hoping for Katrina and the waves. No, sorry. Walking on sunshine. Hey, that, well, it yeah. is. Yes. It is very sunshiny today, um, but you, you know, for features like that. The truck would know if it was if it got disconnected. Yes. And so you're adding a feature, uh, and it's all in software. The hardware's yep. already there for it to know yep. is a trailer plugged in or not. Yep. Um, for it to know and turn on the parking brake because uh, you know with an electronic parking brake now, mm-hmm. it can turn on whenever you tell it to. Right. 
And right. so to say, oh, here's an individual situation where we know that having the parking brake would be beneficial. Right. Or, oh, why wouldn't the alarm go off when someone tries to disconnect the trailer? Right. Sometimes, like, this is like, oh, of course it would do sometimes that. Sometimes what's in the trailer is uh, worth more than the truck. Definitely. And sometimes just in, in uh, the emotion of it, say it's a horse trailer or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, if you got a horse thief out there, but uh, you know, I think that's important. And you, kind of part of your statement, Jordan, was was really insightful. Is that once we put the different hardware on, we had a lot of uh, a lot of workshops where we started making and statements out of it. It's like if I got that and I can do this, and we did that with the trailering industry. You know, we're part of RVIA, we're part of NATM. We're the only two. We're the only OEM that belongs to both. We're the only OEM in NATM. Those checklists are right off of their website. Uh, we take them on trailering rides with us. We do workshops with them. They ask us about the trailers, and you know, we we got stuff rolling out every year for it. And and so that's going to help. You know, if you're buying a truck, there's a good chance that you're going to yes. trailer or tow with it at some point. Yes. And so the more you can make everyone's life easier. Yeah. That's a and, benefit. And as the younger crowd gets into the trucks and get into their uh, lifestyle, you know they want to they want to spend more time outdoors. They, you know the trailering industry is going crazy right now. I think this is their second or third best year of all time. So we want to we want to be the towing vehicle of choice with them. You know to the point where, you know we work with. You know, I've been to every one of the board of directors for each of these companies. Uh, I've been to the uh, RVIA NATM board of directors. You know, we want to be the towing vehicle of choice. I'm not going to be bashful about it. <laughs> you know, if we if we can go to their dealers, their dealers can say, hey, you know, oh, you got this trailer, it weighs this much, fully laden, I've got one of these. They go on and they say, hey, mm -hmm. well, do you want a Denali? And what color? Oh, blue one? Why don't you go down and they hand you the card, go down to my buddy down there, because yeah. I know those guys from GMC yeah. really worked on this and that integration piece of it so it can be seamless is really important to us. Yeah, and, it, and that sort of makes life easier for everybody. Yeah, and safer. Which is, uh, I think, the key. And that's what a lot of the, the camera stuff goes to. Um, so, you know, you, you have the, the transparent trailer. Yep. Someone's going to pass you. You can see it coming long right. before they're in your mirror. Correct. And especially, I think, uh, anyone who's driven a large uh, trailer knows uh, people sometimes get a little close yeah. to you. and. You know, you see the, the things on, on big trucks that say, if you can't see my mirrors, I can't see you. Right. That's just as true exactly. in one of these. Yep. And so if you, you know, we were towing big campers, huge, yeah. you know, 30 plus foot campers that are super, you know, bigger than that than that truck right there. Yep. Um, and if there's someone, you know, tailgating you, like if you were driving in, say, Boston City traffic, yeah, you'd have people whipping all around you. Right. And so having, having those, you know, 360 cameras and the transparent yes. trailer, it's like... Reduce the stress. That's the goal. Yeah. Tailgate, which we haven't even talked about. Right. Um, the multi-function, multi-pro, yeah. multi yeah. multi-function, six-way, super tailgate. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, it's just pure innovation from an innovation company, I think is the tagline. Wow. Yeah. That's a good one. It is. Yeah, it was fun. That was a fun day when we, uh, when Jim Gobart, our technician, yeah. came in and sold that to us. And it didn't look exactly like it did now. Did I ever tell you this story? No. You know, it, it was a tailgate that was kind of right in half and you could fold it down and then the step came out of that so the whole back end was a so step. just a full split yeah yeah okay. looked at it and said, that's really cool i love that that's innovation however you know it couldn't take the loads it still has to, a tailgate still has to take pretty high loads yeah and so where the cable was attaching to it so that's where we turned it i turned to the engineer and said i want that on my truck the gmc guy said i love it then that's where we got the gate within the gate, and that's how we could it's get sort of the, this U shape. The U shape, yep. yep. And then we could put the hinges uh, in, inside of it. We could put the latches on the side, and then we could, you know, we tested it like it was, like double tested. It's like two gates. It builds it, up the, and that helps yeah. with the strength too, right? Yep. Having yep. the U. Yep. It does, and it helps with that. And then the engineers did a great job, you know, keeping wraps on it, and and uh, it was a big surprise. It was a huge and surprise. And then you done the uh, the ad campaign. Yep. And, and all that, and it's a big focus. And I think uh, um, you said, uh, it, you know, people may not be buying the truck solely because of that, but it gets conquest people in the door. Yeah. Which they, is yeah. a huge We've heard thing. they go to the dealer just to see it. They I want to see this tailgate. That was, yeah, it just can't work. And, and which if you have, um, and I've talked about this before, you know, 
they're a Ford guys, and their dad was a Ford guy, yeah. and they've, you know, in their lifetime, they've had six or, you know, all these trucks, and then there's Chevy guys, and there's GMC guys, and there's Ram guys, and to, to be able to pull someone out of that, well, I've always yeah. owned Ford, so of course I'll buy a Ford, or I've always owned Chevy, so of course I'll buy a Chevy, to be able to sort of break that mindset a little bit, and yep. have something so unique, yeah. and I think that's what the, the tailgate is. It is, like, it oh. is. You know, you only get a couple of those in your career. I've been with uh, GMC with our company for 35 years, 36 years now, and you only get a you only get a couple of those in your lifetime. That really and, sort of that that can pivot to say, hey, we can conquest. This is really cool. This is innovation. This is something no one else really has. Right, and you and then you can see what the response was by some others and some other tailgate things that they they haphazardly put out um, <laughs> that you know just to say they had something yeah but so yeah we that 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 was really cool and and uh, the guys that did it and worked on it super proud of it I talk to them all the time and uh, you know really proud of what they did how many people said they, they were gonna put their guns in there because I always joke that that's it's not the glove compartment it's the gun compartment in a truck there did were any few, people in your in your yeah uh, they, they talk about that where do you put your yeah yeah of course they do yeah because it's a truck it, it's yeah a you truck. go to Texas yeah it's a good chance well you know got a place. we uh now that you mentioned that yes so the under siege storage back there one of our uh, one of our engineers one of my business manager took it home and they were looking at it and she came back the next day and said you know I can't my husband can't put his his rifle doesn't fit in there oh no, his shotgun so actually we mocked it up. All right, we're going to tweak this. We tweaked it, yeah. We mocked it up, kind of had a little challenge, and uh, actually went and validated what size it needed to be for certain things that you could store there. <laughs> so, no, that was uh, that was something that... Uh, yeah, I mean, but you talk yeah. about solving problems for customers. Yeah. If you can have a place you can hide it away Yeah. when you run into Walmart or whatever, and, in, you know, in some places, the idea that you'd leave a gun in your car is bonkers. Sure. But here in Wyoming... Pretty you good know, chance if yeah. you drive around the Walmart parking lot, there's going to be a lot of rifles and shotguns the, and things hidden away. The, you know, it's certainly uh, the people here that are a lot of hunting, there are a lot of yep. you know a lot of outdoorsman stuff, and so that's that's the fun of it. Well, Tim, I appreciate all your time, and thanks for having us out here to uh, Jackson Hole. Um, well, I which hope is you just got everything you needed, gorgeous. And, and the driving with the the heavy duty. You know, yeah, we got the heavy duty, we got the diesel, we towed big heavy things. Did you throw something at the Carbon Pro box? I didn't. I did. I, uh, I, I did not try it, but I've seen the people do it. Yeah. Um, and actually, I I was in Fort Wayne with you at the factory. Oh, we saw yeah. the guy try and tear it apart. Yeah. Um, which is uh, yeah, was quite the thing. So well, and then speaking of putting names on it, right? You saw Tim Connor's name yes. on it. Our, yep. Our manufacturing chief engineer, and I uh, still think of him often. And you know, just a you know the carbon fiber box. It's you know there's a you know they say the meek will inherit the earth. mm Hmm. It's actually going to be cockroaches and carbon fiber boxes. That thing's going to last forever. It's our our box is already indestructible. Carbon fiber box is even more indestructible if that's possible. Yep. You know, I guess, it, and if I could, I'd just like to do a shout out to our team at uh, GMC and at General Motors. Just the, some of the finest uh, people and engineers. Uh, and you know, my hats off to them. I'm just proud to be numbered among them uh, as a as a chief engineer. To work with them, so just uh, and it's a really it's amazing it. how many different parts there are on the vehicle, how many different people are involved. Yeah. You know that knob, some number of people had to design that knob, absolutely, and then they had to engineer it, and then they had to make sure it works forever. And the supplier had to tool it, and yep, yep, and it's got to fit every time, and it, yep. like people don't think about buttons, well, and, and they don't and, think about and just just the detent. Yeah, it feels nice, right? Right. So, so if you think yeah. you have big, heavy gloves on, yeah, and you're not looking because you're looking at the road, of course. Were you at our clinics? No, oh. but I, you know, I, I'm smart and stuff. You are. Is you know, you say, okay, so I want to be able to look at the road, reach down without looking, know where yeah. it is, make the adjustment, and then know that I've made it. Yep. While wearing big, heavy gloves. Right. That one's different size than that one. Yep. That one's different size than that one. You can. And you didn't put a knob to change to shift into drive. You have this. Correct. Which feels pretty let's get a little unusual at this point right yeah a lot of people are going but GMC is doing different things too because you got the Acadia that has the buttons yeah right to shift and so that the, there's different ideas around yeah absolutely but that denotes truck right there's it's this kind is of a, truck yeah definitely some love hate relationship with it right yeah and I mean 
I still get into vehicles that have the the knob or or you know the weird shifting things, and I'll still go to try and put it into park. Yeah, and that's part of it is is being a journalist. Yeah, as we change cars so many times, it gets confusing, and I think journalists will complain about the buttons just because it's different. Yeah, but if you own it after a month, you don't ever think about it again. Yeah, you have the buttons, you have the configuration. Yeah, you, you have won't whatever. you won't see one of those dial rotary ones in any of ours. No, it's not your thing. No, it can uh, it can get confused. Yeah, in, in X number, you know, more than uh, more than zero and less than fifteen times out of a thousand, um, as we went and reverse engineered it, that it can be in the wrong gear. Yeah, and, and well, then that's sort of a, an interesting point you bring up. Uh, that's a secret that a, perhaps people think they do, but you guys do a lot of research on the competition. Absolutely, and that and that's on a GM thing. Everybody does that. Yeah, and and the, you know, you'll have a lab and you'll go and buy the new. You know, whatever competitor vehicle, yeah, we and on, test it, take it apart, yeah, see yeah. how it's put together, see yeah. oh, what good ideas do they have, what bad ideas we'll do they have. It. We'll know how much it costs within, you know, within two three percent of what they yep. paid for, and they'll and they'll do the same thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. So every, everybody's doing yeah. it, and you tear it down, and then yeah, you, you know, know and my my goal as a, as a chief executive, chief engineer, you just want them to say, oh damn. Why didn't we think of that? Why didn't we? Think well, and of I think, that? and that's sort of yeah. why, if if someone does have a really good idea. Yeah. That tends to make its way around oh, yeah. really quick. So actually, uh, last thing, uh, and then then we'll end it because we're, we're starting to get long, is the um, trailer towing VIN-specific sticker. Yeah, that's huge. Um, which is really cool, and it's like, that's another one of those things that's like, why did it take this long to come up with that? Well, you know, it was even a fight within my company to get that out there. There's a number of people that tried to kill it because... You had two databases that needed to talk, and oh, it was really hard. And then, you know, that's a that's a other job of a chief engineer, an executive chief engineer. It's like advocate for something. Yeah. Hey, I want this. No, this is a good idea. Yeah, and, and we we got a lot of kudos on that thing. Well, and I think so. You have like, if you want to know what tire pressure to set this at, you've yes. got a sticker on every car. Everyone has a sticker over here on the driver's side yep. door, and you look at it, and that's it. And I feel like that should be the same way. If you have a vehicle that's meant for towing, yep. it should have that sticker, and everybody should just, you know, Ford, Ram, Toyota, everybody should just come together and say, hey, we're going to standardize this. Yes. Here's the sticker we're going to use so that you can look at it and know in an instant. Right. So when you go to U-Haul, or when you go to the boat company, or when you go to the horse trailer company, or the RV company, yep. they can say, okay, let's look at your sticker. Yes. And what can it tell? So and I think that's... A couple calculations, you can determine exactly. Yeah, and you know, and it's safe, and it's and it's all that yeah. stuff. Rather than just being like, well, in the commercial, it said I could tow 22,000 pounds, so we're yeah. going to do it. Yeah, 35, 5. Yeah, and then you end up on a Facebook group yeah. with pictures of your... Yeah, uh, so. yeah. And uh, like, subscribe, hit the little notification bell so you can see when there's a new... Uh, new video, all that good stuff. We really appreciate it. Uh, and thank you, Tim, for your time. Oh, and you. uh, we're we're gonna go off to dinner now. So I gotta wander my way through Jackson City traffic. Surprising yes. amount of traffic, but it is tourist season. Yes, it we're is. at like peak tourist right now. Uh, so we're gonna go do that, and uh, we'll say goodbye for now. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you.